Hey guys, LP here, and I want to show you something. I've been promising you guys I was going to do this video. Here it is. This is the Suture Practice Kit uh, that is made by Metaclimber. Medclimber. Medclimber. I will put a uh, description, a, a link in the description for you guys. And uh, let's go ahead and get into it. Let's see what's inside this box. Okay, let's see here. Uh, as shown, there we go. Uh, I have cracked the seals on it already, but that's okay. That's just to open it up, and let's see what's inside of here. Oh, look here. Um, this looks like this. This looks like this is going to be our tool kit here. I'm trying to do this up as cl up close as possible because it's difficult to see some of these things. We're going to open this in a second. What are we having here? Uh, we have multiple. It looks like just piles. Let me uh, f let me find a spot. Move this back. It looks like just piles and piles and piles of different types of sutures it's like we've got some some uh, scalpel blades there to practice using the scalpels we'll spread this out let's go ahead and do all of that stuff let's let's go ahead and set this to the side and see what we got here we got some nylon monofilament There's one of those we got some brill braided silk there we go we're going to keep our scalpel blade like right there it's not super important there's one two three of those bad boys. We got some polyester braided. What do we got here? So we've got some polypropylene non-filamented. This thing is just loaded. Polypropylene non-filamented, polypropylene non-filamented, uh, non-filamented. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, nylon, nylon monofilament. One of those. These, they, they all seem to be color coded. I do not know if these are considered to be sterile or not. I'm going to have to look into that for you guys. Uh, I don't. I honestly don't see why they wouldn't be. They. It would be kind of stupid to have a product that doesn't, that isn't like have multi uses. So what do we got here? Um, we're separating all that braided silk, braided silk or silk braided. And the green stuff really makes it easy. Now one of the reasons that they have different kinds of uh, uh, sutures is because they use them for different functions and uh, let's see, I'll move, I need to move this there you go they have they use them for different functions uh, and they have to be tied differently as well so the nylon mon filaments let's see if the number is common here one two three four five I bet the numbers on the box but this is more fun one two three four five same here I'm gonna anticipate that these are all Five, there's at least five in here and what I've noticed is is that when you're training to do that you're actually going to uh, end up cutting this uh, cutting these up so you will use them up and then obviously three of your scalpels all right so basically 20 opportunities to practice it is crazy 19 millimeter reversed culling uh, it uh, looks like they're all 19 millimeter this is in reference to the the actual curvature of the suture needle itself okay so we're going to take those and we're going to put those to the side and what do we got we'll get this we're going to get this out of the way we're going to open up the actual kit itself and let's see what's inside of it all right it looks pretty standard for you guys okay so keeping it as simple as possible what do we have here we have uh, forceps uh, these are uh, mostly like adsens, or they're also known as pickups. They look like tweezers to you, but I'm going to show them to you there differently. This is what they call a needle driver. Uh, I'll show you the difference between that and a hemostat in a second. And then you actually have, this is the your actual scalpel itself. This is what you put those scalpel blades onto. And then on this side right here, you actually have the another hemostat, which is right here. The hemostat has a curve in it. And then you actually have the scissors, okay, for, for cutting the the um, the actual suture itself. So looking at this, the with the uh, Addison forceps, um, what you have to do, and we get this as close to the camera as possible. I guess that's where, where's the where's the camera at? There's the camera right there. If you notice, there's little points on the end of this. This is for grabbing tissue and pulling it. Uh, it's actually very common when they do sutures to use this kind of tool to, uh, along with the needle driver to uh, position the skin or, or the, 
the uh, uh, yeah, position the skin, basically, to control the skin, the surface itself. And they use these little points to grab the, the tissue, not like you blow your nose, but the tissue, your skin itself, and pull it so that it's actually used to manipulate it, get it into place, that kind of thing. It's not going to slip out. So these are what they call the Addisons, and these are non-textured as well. Textures, if you looked, if you looked at your standard um, tweezers, they would have like these little ridge lines in the inside here. These do not have them. These are not textured as it's called. So we're going to put this back real quick. And then you have your needle driver. Now a needle driver looks very similar to um, hemostats. Hemostats are actually no normally always curved. And if you look inside here, it's actually got a very weird uh, abra abrased surface for gripping small metal. I don't know if that's if, if that is uh, actually. I'm trying to get it so it it's it's a. Uh, can I put that behind there? There you go. You guys should be able to see it a little bit better now, I think. There you go. Uh, but uh, And also, there's also this little channel inside of it as well. So the idea is that it, it, it's, it will hold the, uh, the suture itself, the suturing needle, much easier. It's designed to do that. And yes, it does clamp. You can clamp it. But a lot of times, you're kind of wasting your time doing that with sutures. So we're going to go ahead and put that back. Uh, and then you've obviously you've got the scalpel itself. The scalpel is used with the scalpel scalpel blades, which are uh, these are actually sterile blades. Uh, it says it right on the package, sterile blades. And basically, you just slip them. Whoop, actually, this, the shape of it. There, there you go. I think you can see the shape. Whoop, and then you would actually have a scalpel to use, uh, so you could actually cut through the texture. And uh, a lot of times on these kits, they use them so that you can make your own. Uh, you can practice using your own uh, um, scalpel skills on the texture itself, so or or the media for uh, for for that is as it's called. All right, so we're going to put that back. As preppers, we're always looking for that bug out location, but let's face it, land is getting harder and harder to find. What most don't know is that vacant land is everywhere. The nice thing about vacant land is that there's no leaky roofs, no clogged drains, and nothing to repair. In fact, vacant land can be developed with your dream home in mind, or it could be used as a vacation spot, a remote ranch, or just a campsite. In some cases, you can actually buy land in one day with a credit card. Now, many of us are looking for a bug out location or just a secure spot where the family can gather during a crisis event. I want people to start thinking about land the same way that the preparedness community thinks about precious metals. And that's why I like this company so much, Land of Land. Now do yourself a favor, I want you to go to landofland.com and get the process started to owning your own land. And then you've got your hemostats. Now hemostats are primarily used to control tissue. They can also be used to clamp off things. And if you look inside here, I'm hopefully I'm, I'm hopefully I'm able to show you the the actual texturing inside of it, the ridge that's inside of it. Maybe if I do this, maybe you can see it better like that. I'm not sure, but notice the ridges that are inside it actually like gripping ridges. They're inside of that versus what's inside of the needle driver. Also, with the needle driver, the needle driver is actually it looks very similar, but it is not. It is not hemostat needle driver. And there's a reason for that, which you'll see when we actually start to suit your stuff. So we're going to go ahead and throw this back in here. That's not the right side. There we go. Uh, we're going to put the needle driver or the hemostat back in. And then the scissors, just standard scissors. Now, frankly, these aren't super, I don't think these are super great scissors, but I think they'll get the job done. Um, they are held together with a, sc a screw, which is awesome. Uh, and uh, I think that they're probably, let me try something here real quick. Here, let, me, let me try something. Yeah, I mean... They, they cut paper reasonably well, so I think that uh, they're they're actually pretty good scissors. This would actually be an awesome suture kit to use, probably all by itself. I would sh I need to check and find out if the um, the actual sutures themselves, the needles, uh, the uh, the line, if those are sterile as well. I'll have to read some of the packaging, uh, or maybe I'll put something right here someplace, whether yes it is or no it's not in this particular kit. Okay, so uh, with that said, let's go ahead and we're going to go ahead and set that to the side. And what I liked about this kit is it actually has 
two different pads in it. So the first pad is the standard pad that you see all the time. You're always seeing this pad. Uh, now the neat thing is, is we're going to take the take it out. We're going to take it out of the plastic because I think that that's just. I think you're going to be able to see it a little bit better if I pull it out of the plastic because I want you guys to see something um, about this particular uh, brand. Now. Um, we're going to keep it on here just so you have some kind of like there's a contrast but if you look closely there are different colors okay and this represents the layers of skin when you start to suture okay so you could actually you actually need to know how to suture into skin uh, that is that basically is the is the um, is the wound so deep that it requires a special type of suture uh, and then you would be able to practice that. Other than that, it's basically the typical same type of uh, material that's used on all of these. We'll probably start probably here when we start to practice a little bit. Uh, you know, they give these to you so that it's difficult to pull it back together. Um, and it is, it's, I think it's, it's very malleable. It's pliable. It's very similar to human skin or tissue uh, in its texture. I think uh, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, and uh, you'll notice that none of these like so this is this is very uncommon when somebody gets cut open um, It's normally something a little bit more like this or like this uh, And then obviously that you get to practice doing this the idea is that you are able to practice on multiple different um, Types of wounds now. I, I don't know about any why wounds, but it is it is quite interesting to see that so Taking this and setting this to the side, I'm going to go ahead and put it back inside of it. Now, I'll put it back into its container later because we're probably going to end up cutting on that. Or not cutting, but actually using it. And then what we have, this is the neat part. This one right here, um, I'm not going to take this one out of its package because you've seen what it is. Uh, it actually has suction cups and it is curved. It's the same material that the, the other uh, surface was. Uh, and uh, material, it's exactly the same. It's just that it's glued down to here. Uh, it's a one-time use item, but uh, I think we could probably find a way to, to get more than one use out of it. Uh, and the idea is that it's you actually would use your scalpel and cut, and it would open like skin does, and then you would be able to suture something that felt even more natural, uh, giving you more experience on surfaces that are not completely flat. Because if you haven't checked, guys, none of our body is complete flat, completely flat. No matter no matter how much you work on your abs, they're not going to be completely flat. So let's 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 remember that. So we're going to put this away for right now. But I think what we're going to do is um, we're going to go ahead and pull out uh, the. The actual kit right here uh, to to do some suturing. Now I've got to move the camera around a little bit, so I'm going to try to get the camera as almost as over this as possible. So that and by the way, guys, this thing is really sticking to this table. I don't think it's meant to, but I think but because of its surface, because of its uh, it's the the material that they used, that it's really uh, going to be cool to to suture on top of this. Okay, so. I guess the first thing we need to do is uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna need to move this camera so that it's more over the top. Uh, you're gonna see a scene change, and let's go ahead and do that now. 